Welcome back to House on Carrion Hill, House of Bob's cosmic horror adventure played in Pathfinder 2nd Edition in the Galarian campaign setting. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm playing Willen Dappen, the gnome wizard. Hi, I'm Jeanette. I'm playing Bimkin, the long snout rat oracle. Hey, I'm Schubert. I am playing Nib Nub, the razor tooth goblin fighter. I'm Trevor, and I'll be playing Theobald, the orc investigator. And I'm Sean, your game master. If you like what we do and you want to support the show, visit us at patreon.com slash the house of Bob. Last time on House on Carrion Hill, after a knockdown drag out fight with Keeper Rupman Meyer in his Middenstone factory, the adventurers stand victorious amongst the rubble. Now they set their sights on their last target, Keeper Crove. And so here you are in front of Rupman Meyer's Minstone Vats. The building is slowly beginning to catch fire. You know that within a few minutes it will be out of control. Rutman Meyer lies on the ground outside the building between you. What do you do? Should we look uh, around for stuff? Maybe check his body. I think we should probably put out fire. This probably doesn't look very good. It's too late. We <laughs> should we should probably go. Because I'm not going down for arson. Not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> <laughs> not again. Nice. <laughs> Maybe someone with magic could use like a frost spell or something to put out the fire and then I I could go check the body. We could just drag away the body and check it later. But the the burning building, we could we could try eluding it now. Uh, there's probably still zombies inside. Good point. Well let's uh let's do this. Theobald, you check the body. You find on his person a spell book, a ring of keys a potion of some sort and a ring. Cool. Look at all this <laughs> stuff I got, guys. Cool. I'm going to go see if he had any food inside. Maybe not back into the burning building. Nip Why up. not? Because it's Just, on fire. Yeah, it so might what? not. I'm not afraid. You think a little you should, fire you. can scare me? No, it's not the fire I'm worried about. I just think that maybe he doesn't have anything good. You know, like I smelled his dead body. It smells really bad. I don't think he eats Although good stuff. there was a locked door. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that last door. Maybe we could go in the back of the building and and kick the wall in or something while it's burning down. Right. That's not a bad idea. Willen, you don't yep. have any uh, water spells? Not really. I could, I could put acid on it. Would that help? I mean, there is a big <laughs> pond right beside. I could mage hand a little bit of water on top. Just one handful at a time. <laughs> 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 I'm helping. I'll be honest. My specialty is usually putting things on fire. Yeah, I think it's clear that we're not competent <laughs> enough to put out this fire. <laughs> but okay, when we were rushing out of the building... Mm -hmm. There were still some ways to get around, even though things were catching on fire. What's it looking like now? Uh, it's about the same. Oh, what if we went around, all the way around the building where Theo was trying to break down the door yeah, and we busted yeah. down that door? Yeah, let's go around if back. I'm cheating, though, if I look at yeah. the map, it just looks like it leads outside. <laughs> I mean, I also now have keys, Ruppman Meyer's keys, so we might be able mm. to just like, unlock the back door. Okay, maybe he has go. like a secret entrance. Yeah, and maybe there's food there. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, I have food in my bag. Like, why are you holding out on me? You run around the side of the building to a rear door. I'm pretty sure Theobald actually took the barricade off of this door. I can't remember, but I'm going to assume you did because you're invisible and yeah. messing with doors for oh, so I, long. I totally did. <laughs> yeah. This door swings <laughs> open, and you see the back half of the vat room. There's a barrels and rubble in front of you, and right to your left is a door that Theobald tried to pick earlier, but is locked. I try my keys now. You jangle a few keys in it, you finally find the right one, and it pops open. Oh. As uh, smoke begins to uh, accumulate against the ceiling of the room, you s look into the smaller side area and find a small cot lying in the corner of the room, opposite a desk and a rickety wooden chair. There's a door to the north on this room, hangs open, revealing a small water closet in the alcove beyond. 
On the desk, you can see kind of a collection of papers and and maybe like a big journal or something like that sitting open. But that is about all you see. Grab the journal. Yeah, grabbing the journal. Search the desk. Yeah, I was going to say Nimna runs over, throws the journal aside and someone else can catch it. And then, yeah. And then, uh, looking for food underneath yeah, the journal. Yeah looking, yeah, looking for food inside the desk, going through drawers. Unfortunately, you don't find any food, but you do oh find God. a bag that jingles and jangles. And there are several fine writing implements here, um, probably worth a decent amount of money, but probably nothing that would interest Nimnub. Oh, you- oh Nimnub! We, we could turn that into food. Okay, magic guy, whatever you say. It's called currency. <laughs> the bag of gold contains 15 pieces of gold, and the fine writing implements are worth another 15. So I'll just divvy that up amongst you. Nice. And then, of course, the journal. You gather that up really quickly, and you take a look at the rest of the papers, and it looks mostly like invoicing stuff. So probably nothing that's super, super useful. Hmm. Okay. Can we leave now? I feel like I'm about to die. Yeah, no, it's definitely getting smoky in here. Where was the spot where there was like all all his booze? That was the elevated level above the furnaces. Did we ever have a chance to see if there's anything else up there? Did it look uh, you like didn't it? have time to really look around too much. You could make your way over there. The smoke is rising. In the interest of expediency and smoke, I'll tell you that area B3 has nothing. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Just a bad guy that you've already taken care of. I can't of. believe you didn't let us role play that out. <laughs> no, let's get out of here. Are we going back to the inn? The inn, or should we go back to the mirror? Nah, screw the mirror. Wait, we don't like the mayor now? I thought we liked the mayor. <laughs> no, I'm fine with the mayor. It's <laughs> just we don't need to go see him right now. Hmm. I don't think we need to go see him. Do we? I feel like all of us could probably use with a rest and heal up before we go see Crow. Oh, yeah. Because... Yes. Time's the ticking, but we definitely got to heal. I am what technically is called near death. Did the mirror give us a place to stay? Or he did let you stay in the in the Rag Manor last night. Yeah. Right. And let's get caught up here. Two and a half intense episodes of combat. So where are you guys at? How are you, how are you standing for resources and for hit points and all of that? I'm curious to see how uh, close I came to taking you out. Oh, I am like inches. Where are you at? I'm at three hit points. Wow. Ooh, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, you got pretty darn close. I've expended pretty much all my high level spells. Have a couple like first level spells, but that's about it. Wowzers. So I, I I threw like everything, everything at that fight. I spent most of it invisible, so I didn't get hurt nearly as much. But I, <laughs> I got down to uh, 43 and I used up, I think, all of my hero points. Nimnov, how are you, how'd you fare? So Nibnum's uh, at 31 out of 71, so pretty badly injured. And I still have tons of potions that I keep forgetting to use. Classic. You have so many hit points. Jeez. Yeah, 71 is... I'm I'm a tough little son of a bitch. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I'm I'm doing all right, though. I mean, I, I think Nibnub had fun in that last fight, except for when he got confused. And that was really horrible. And that... Now he feels really bad because he's like, he's not sure who he bit and what really happened. Oh yeah, you bit my armor off of me. That was, yeah, the big highlight. Does Theobald have his like tattered, chewn up, <laughs> like an old dog toy that's just yeah. been like shredded to pieces? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can bring that to the tailors and be like, could you fix this? Just dangling off of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nim Nam, what the hell? I'm, I'm sorry, Tom. I feel... I feel really bad inside me and I don't know how to make it better, but I I do have some extra studded leather armor. If you want that, I took it from a guy who doesn't need it anymore because I killed him. So you can have it. Well, thank you, Nibnub, for uh, the gift. Let's consider it forgiven. I understand that it wasn't me you were trying to bite. It was just something else you were trying to bite through. Well, you did You're start confusing. running really fast, and I just saw a target, you know? Yeah, I but, didn't mean to wink at you. I'm sorry. That was, I, I was out of no, line. No, it's, it's, I'm the bad one. I'm bad, so no, I'm here, sorry. No. You're good. You're not bad. You're the Let, good one. Let's, 
let's hug it out, buddy. It's really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just don't bite me. Okay. A fork porks you in the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll drop that. <laughs> The most important thing we learned is do not wink at anyone, no matter what, <laughs> under any you circumstances. Got it. Wink. Fight <laughs> <laughs> <Bite God>. him. <laughs> <laughs> I would die. <laughs> <laughs> Bimkin, how do you fare out of all of this? Bimkin's at twenty five out of sixty one. Um, I still have some spells, but I kind of think I forgot to count some of them. That's plausible. Yeah. So I think I pretty much expended a bunch of things too. All right. Yeah. So it sounds like y'all sleepy and you want to find somewhere to rest is what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Let's All go right. see. Uh, it's Sarah at the 10 ton medic. It's a number of tons. However many it is. Five, four Five ton. ton, eight ton, seven ton. I don't know. The heavy medic. 71 ton. Yeah. The heavy medic. <laughs> That's the t-shirt. It's just, it says, a number and then it's scratched out and then another number and it's just like a bunch of etch, etched out numbers <laughs> and then ton matic <laughs> with Tom and the boys <laughs> Tom and the boys yeah the yeah. one night only that's a little poster poster underneath the sign <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright so you go back to the seven ton matic it is later in the day because you spent your morning wrestling with zombies and fire Sarah Brindley is in there with a, a couple of regulars guarding the door uh, as you knock and come through, she greets you uh, with just a huge smile on her face. Oh, oh wow! Oh my God! I was so I was so worried about you guys. Are you all doing okay? When you didn't come back last night, I I thought the worst. Not really. I, the magic guy here he he's almost dead, and I'm oh really con- yeah. I'm really confused and. Uh, the other guy, he was invisible for a while. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, and worst of all, his armor is ruined. Oh, poor Nip Nub. Here, we'll, we'll get you some food. And she oh. uh, runs back into the, the kitchen and comes out with a, a big pot of stew for everyone to share. Oh, my. All right, everyone put on their role play pants. Sharing. This is going to be a while. <laughs> yeah, my role play bib. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> role play bib. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> mm, this is a really good stew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Is that sweet potato or carrot? I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be squash, actually. Oh, oh, that's really nice. I like that. You manage to feed yourselves. You uh, feel a little bit of comfort being back in familiar territory once again. The couple of townsmen that are are helping Sarah take care of the place and watching the door to make sure nobody breaks in tell you that they're continuing to hear reports of rampant lawlessness throughout the town. Fortunately, the crows are kind of managing that part of everything as you guys are busy with what you're doing. They did hear that there was yet another murder, yet another strange attack in which someone was deprived of their their skin. That strange serial killer is still on the loose somewhere. However, you know that Probably the well-being of the entire city might trump that for the time being. I can't remember. Do we ever establish if there was a connection between the two things? I feel like we've spoken about the notion that Crove is held up in like a former hospital, like a psychiatric ward. Mm -hmm. Maybe these are ex-patients of his or something? Yeah, we're considering that it might be ex-patients. I think we got some proof that some of the former victims were ex-patients there and that we had some inkling that Crove was using them. Yeah, because they were doing not a nice spirally guy. cutouts in people, right? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of a Crove I, thing. Probably trying to summon, you know, more spawn of Yogg-Sothoth or something good like that. Maybe he's even just trying to protect himself against that which he summoned by giving power to these beings right. around him. Giving it sacrifices. Either way. Either it's way, coming for him next. Yeah, and we gotta we gotta take out Crove before we take out that beast. Otherwise, we gotta take out the beast or whatever the heck it is, the invisible yeah deity from God knows where. All right. So as you guys are hunkering down to rest, I'll draw your attention back to Rutman Meyer's journal. 
I'll just start reading it. I'm, I'm done my chili and I'm just going to read it out loud to the group. I'm like, all right, everybody, let's cozy up next to the fire. All right. Rupman Myers Journal describes his experiences exploring the catacombs under Carrion Hill. It seems as though of the keepers you've ran to so far, it looks like he spent the most time actually underground. He's got some pretty wild observations about just how much is left to be uncovered down there. One sample excerpt reads, The Numerians were keen to be away after ransacking the hill, as the scale of the tunnels below daunted them. They kept finding more and more parts of the old libraries behind false doors and secret rooms. Eventually, they decided to simply flood the tunnels, but this failed them as well. For the ancients were keen intellects, and their tunnels do not flood easily. It is possible that a whole series of chambers, such as the Sunless Grove, still lie waiting to be uncovered. The journal goes on to detail the discovery of the incantation in the narcotic manuscripts that they have used to open the Sunless Grove, as well as Meyer's obvious excitement at the prospect of using the portal to contact keen intellects beyond the human shell. The last entry in the journal is from a few days ago and simply says, Tomorrow... The old gods shall speak once more, and we keepers shall be in attendance to learn from them. Tomorrow? That would probably would have been when they did the ritual. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Are there, like, dates? Yes, he's got it dated. So it was a couple days ago, presumably, and you're kind of tracking back your time. It would have been the day before the Day of Bones. The day we all arrived, basically. Or the day before no, we, we arrived all on, arrived, because yeah. we arrived on the Day of Bones. That's right. Yeah, pretty much. Wild. Pretty impressive. Did he summon us here? It wasn't us, but he summoned somebody. Did he catalog how to navigate through the catacombs? It was more so like his observations. There's some miniature maps and tunnels, but it's very fragmented. And you've got kind of a sketch of the Sunless Grove, but not what connects to it. It does go into some detail about how they prepared the space. They actually installed bars and gates on different entryways to the Sunless Grove to prevent other denizens of the Darklands from coming out to there. So mm. you, you suspect that maybe one of those were breached, allowing the ghouls in. Mm. As well, they contracted a group of Caligni in order to help them clear rubble and stone out of the way. You suspect this might have been the small folk that you fought down there as well. Mm. Oh, okay. Does he mention anything about Crove in the journal? Loosely. He doesn't name names. Seems like he was being careful about that. But you are able to sort of infer when he's talking about his companions or the other keepers, kind of who he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, the, the men that you've either found already or, or Crove, who you still have yet to find. For a drunk man, he did a very good job of keeping track of everything. Kind of yeah, suspicious. Yeah, pretty good. Mm-hmm. He's like Mark Twain. Um, I have a question for Sarah, if she's still around. Yeah, I'm right here. What's up? You said someone else died, like, recently? Like, skinned? Yeah, that's what we've heard, but, I mean, the town is in such a kerfuffle that I haven't had time to really get into that. Uh, did, did you hear what part of town it was? Um, I haven't fucking decided. <laughs> 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 uh, a different part of town from where we are, that's for <laughs> sure. Wow, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> I have real decided. Good. Really helping out Tom and the it boys. It was it. We were in. It was in the tangles. Okay, I don't know where that is. <laughs> I'm new to town. Uh, yeah, we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> you got the crown. the The crown is the top of the hill with like Rag Manor and the cathedral. You got the tangles, which is like the hill, uh, the sides of the hill, working up mm-hmm. to the crown, and then you've got the filth, which is like the the flat area that feeds into the river. And where are we located currently? We're in right the now. You're in the tangles, but it's okay. uh, it's a pretty broad district. Hmm. I'm also Dan going to put in the Discord chat Rutman Meyer's spellbook. Ooh. Ooh, nice. In case there's something on there you like the looks of, can I learn something from it? You can. To do so, just takes you a little bit of time and a skill check. Spend one hour per level of the spell, during which you must remain in study. You attempt a skill check. The DC is higher based on what level spell you're trying to learn. Okay. I would like to learn either Mirror Image or mm-hmm. Dimension Door. Can you learn fourth level spells? That's a good point. No. Let's go with Mirror Image then. Okay. So Mirror Image is a second level spell. You have to expend six gold and get a DC 18 
arcane check. Boom. 29. That is a critical success. It only costs you three gold instead of six. Ooh. I would like to see how that works out. Like the book's like, give me the money. Uh, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually, uh, there's like special inks and stuff like that he needs in order to inscribe it into his own spell book. Oh yeah. That makes much more sense. Yeah. I just thought the book was like, mm, pay up, bitch. <laughs> pay up, bitch. Now I have 16 gold. Cool. All right. So assuming we're going to, I'll get some rest and bed down and heal up. I'll wave my hands and you guys have done enough first aid and Sarah's helped you out with food and you cast some healing spells maybe. So you'll all be back to full hit points when you wake up in the morning. Guys, I feel like I slept a hundred (laughs) years. All right. So with that all taken care of. I do have one other thing. Oh, oh. I seem to be still suffering from zombie rot. Thank you so much for bringing this back to my attention. I know. I, I didn't want to, but. First thing in the morning. I need you to roll a fortitude save. What about I feel if, fine. if I did a heal? Would that do anything? Nope. It would be uh, something to cure diseases or restoration, something like mm-hmm. that. Should have went to the church. Take me to church. <laughs> I got a 23 on my fortitude save. 23 against zombie rat is a success. Yeah. You're going to go back to a stage one carrier oh, with no ill effect. Okay. <laughs> A moderate win. (laughs) All right. So at this point, you can actually be full health. But probably worth it to go to uh, the priests to get Mm -hmm. that dealt with. Before it gets worse. Yeah. Definitely an option. I'm sure I'll be fine. (laughs) No, no, no. Mm. I insist. I am at some point probably going to have to sleep next to you. And I don't want to wake up to another confused person trying to bite people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't. Mind gross stuff, but I don't want to become a zombie like you. <laughs> yes, you look quite pale. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's go before you say anything else. <laughs> All right, so you guys head back up the hill to the cathedral of Phrasma. You once again meet the same priest you uh, encountered a couple days ago. He asks you, uh, how, how is your... How's your struggle against evil going? Great. We're, we're killing a lot of evil stuff. But my friend here, he got an embarrassing condition. And I was hoping you guys could help. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little zombie rot. That's all. Everyone Gross. gets it. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to be embarrassed of, my friend. I have been dealing with much in terms of disease and toxins in these last few days. Allow me to heal you, my friend. And he reaches out and casts restoration on you. Nice. May your struggle against evil be ever more successful as you move on forwards. Thanks. Is there anything else I can do to help you today? Can you, like, bless us or something? Because we're going to be dealing with some really intense evil. Certainly, certainly. In the name of Phrasma, I bless you. I uh, urge the (laughs) Mother of Graves to watch over you upon your way. I hope and pray that her protection shall guide you. The undead shall fall before you and the dark tapestry shall be pierced by light. It's a wordy blessing. That's pretty good. I thought you were going to say I urge you to be careful. I do also <laughs> urge you to be careful. And don't get bit anymore by zombies. One, one thing, mm-hmm. Tom pulls out a glass vial of unusual liquid oh, yes. that I got from Ruppman Meyer. I'm like, would you be able to uh, identify this? Anybody can try to identify this with a, a successful arcana, occult, religion, or nature check. Oh, I'll have a crack at it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I also have... Um, I would also like to try with the religion. 15 for me. Not very good. Bimkin got 19. Nope. Ooh, there you Boom. go. Boom. Theobald rolled an arcana, and I got a 30. All so right. I pulled Whoa. it out and held it in the light. I was like, do you know what this is? Oh, actually. <laughs> I, actually. <laughs> actually. <laughs> that's a moderate healing potion. Beautiful. You also had a ring, didn't you? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I do have a you ring, do. don't I? I? I put it on. It is real nice. 
is gold and has a garnet. Uh, it's easily worth 25 gold. I detect magic on So not magical. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks for the blessing. Did it do anything? Uh, yes, Phrasma is now certainly aware of your plight and watching over you. Any any buffs or... Have faith. Is that like a magical so no, blessing? No <laughs> I said have faith. That's Can kind you... of the, the whole point. Let's just uh, leave you yeah. guys. Man. Yeah. I didn't come for your words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're so rude. <laughs> so rude. Yeah. yeah. We're the ones fighting all the evil. I'm sorry. I'm just, I've had a rough day. <laughs> Thank you for healing my condition. <laughs> You're very welcome. Just throw money at them as we walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do put a, a gold in there. Well, the, 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 what's it called? The donation box. The, yeah, the donation the, box. The tithing box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. drop a gold. Yeah. There. You feel good yeah, about I that. I do too. Theobald feels good about that. Me too. Nibkin also feels good about that. Superstitious. Can't be the only one who doesn't put gold in. Nibnub feels like he's being guilted into something. Why are you guys giving them the coin things but not getting this? I'm like, you, you were telling me before that these are forgetting stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got healed. I didn't get anything except you got those nice words. <laughs> I got a friggin' speech. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. If you don't think it was worth, I'm out of here. Don't give him a goal. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> All right, you head back out into the square. You see Rag Manor ahead of you. The sky today is quite dark and stormy. You know it will begin to rain any moment. What? Uh, because I didn't put a gold into the thing? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I paid for a clear weather. What do you see? What happens? <laughs> off uh, camera or off radio, uh, we have uh, done a little bit of shopping. Uh, a couple of players bought some healing potions. Nibnub talked to someone who scammed him into buying a bunch of gemstones. Some fear gems. Some fear gems. For my teeth. They make them all shiny and pretty and scary. And Theobald got, like, uh, oil of revelation, which is kind of like glow-in-the-dark liquid to pour on it, onto his weapons. Oh. Yeah. That will uh, help him if he encounters something invisible. Oh. Which certainly won't happen in this adventure. Oh, no, definitely smart. not. How, how much oil is in one of my containers? Like, could I share the oil with somebody? No, that is a single use. It costs 25 gold. Mm. We could We could drop another one on there if you wanted to, but... Yeah, I think I bought two because I realized that I also have a sword. Okay. So you drop a second one in there. You have a sword? I'm going to take some more of your money away. I've only ever seen you punch things. Yeah, I only ever have punched things. But the sword I have was given to us by the mayor. Or no, I found it Mm. on some guard's body and the mayor thought it was special. So he gave it to me because I'm tall. (laughs) (laughs) Just because you're tall? (laughs) Yeah, that, that was it. You like <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty tall. Here's a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I was reading about this object reading thing. I got a scroll a while back. Right from it, the Sunless Grove. Right. And this ring, it just looks like a like a fancy ring. It doesn't have anything yeah. interesting about it. Right. Okay. I'll save it. Okay. But uh, it sounds pretty cool because apparently it will give you some details about what occurred with that object within the past week. Oh. So we should remember to use that on something cool. Okay. This might be our last opportunity, unless we use it on Crove or something. We're going to use everything on Crove. This might give us an insight into Crove when we have to face him. Yeah, so do we want to use it on this ring? I'm cool with that. Yeah, go for it. Okay. All right, I give the ring to Bimkin. So yeah, all I have to do is place a hand on the object and learn a piece of information about an emotional event that occurred involving that object within the past week. Okay. The four of you standing in the street pull out the ring. Bimkin pulls the scroll out of his scroll case and reading the words begins to become effused with a strange power. His cloak begins to flutter and you guys hear these whispers circling around him. Bimkin reaches out and holds the ring in his palm and these whispers intensify and Bimkin is getting suddenly these flashes of memories and these snippets of voices. We go back a week. 
and we see Rutman Meyer walking through the rain. He's trudging uphill towards the asylum, Crove's asylum. He opens a back door with a key and steps inside to a meeting chamber with four other hooded figures. They sit around a table and they all joyfully examine the narcotic manuscripts in front of them. Hours of planning take place. They pour over the pages, assign duties, take turns deciding who is going to get what in order to make things happen. We flash forward. In the sunless grove, the five of them are circled around the altar, all chanting in unison, conjuring something forth. Powerful lines of purple energy burst forth from their chests, striking the altar. A portal begins to open, a strange spiral portal that seems to defy all laws of physics and space and time. They peer through for a moment into this roiling mass of clouds and gnashing teeth and eyes and lines and geometric patterns. It's all twisting and turning in such a strange way that Rutman's very soul begins to crack and Bimkin's mind begins to just race with pain. Suddenly there's a flash. Rutman then is running. Behind him he can hear the heavy footsteps of Crow out into the streets. Rutman takes just a bare moment to look Crow in the eyes. He sees that his companion is overcome by madness and determination. Rutman decides I'm out. He runs back to his factory hides in the back chamber and what follows then is just four straight days of drunken stupor he's furious with the zombies furious with himself terrified the last thing the ring gives you an impression of is noise something happening outside in the factory Rutman screams then stands and begins to cast a spell then Bimkin sees images of himself Nibnub and Willen making their way towards him. And that's it. Well, that was very sad. Why did you learn? Well, basically, this guy joined the other four. They open portal. The beast steps, well, I think it steps out. I don't know. Rupin started to run. And then he sees that Craven's gone mad. And then he's like, that's it. I'm out. I'm just going to go back and drink a bunch. And then I guess he drank for four days and then we came and killed him but I, I think he might have been slightly remorseful but he was very mean to his zombies yeah he was justified no worries he was quite mad at them did that spell that caused you to feel at an emotional level what this object has experienced did that also cause you to feel a little drunk also for like four days are you a little buzzed right now <laughs> Bimkins now I got a four day bender hanging <laughs> <laughs> My tummy is a little upset. All right, put that condition on your sheet. Yeah. <laughs> Sick and full. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to go to like an IHOP or something. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's is open. Yes. Yeah, a teaser pleaser, a teaser, please. Teaser pleaser, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want extra pierogies. <laughs> 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 they only give you like two. It's really stupid. Hmm. On the plus side, you know what Crove looks like now, right? No, it's two of Do us. Do I? Yeah, so you would have seen, uh, through Rutman's eyes, you would have seen Crove, a tall, lanky half-orc with a kind of a skullet with really long white hair. He's got little nubby tusks, much smaller than Theobald's, sort of a bronzish skin tone. Uh, he looks quite advanced in age. But I didn't see the what came out of the portal, right, because he ran away? No, you did not see it. Okay. Was this an experience that you were sort of dictating to us? Do we know that you saw Rutman going through the back door? Or is that something that we need to eke out? Bimkin would recognize the door that they went through. Would you recognize the key? Theobald shows Bimkin all the keys. There's like a one special key and like a bunch of other keys. It is definitely the one special key. It's a little bit different from the others. Perfect. Guys, I think we know we have our way in. And Crove likely doesn't know that that's a way that other people are going to come in other than the people that have keys like that's this. That's good investigative work. I think you deserve a hero point, but I'm not the one to give them out. 
I would say Bimkin and Theobald <laughs> can both have a hero point. Yeah. Sweet. Bimkin for uh, using object reading to such good effect and Theobald for connecting the dots on the key. Nice. So what do you do now? Is that where you're going? Is this it? Are you headed to the asylum? Man, I'm ready. Um, I did have a question. I do have a scroll of Glitter Dust level two. Mm-hmm. If I was to cast that, would that expend a spell slot, essentially? No, the scroll is just... It's a one-time one. use kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else anybody needs before we get this on? Nib Nub, have you written your will? Are you prepared? I can tell you where my mommies live. I might die too, so that might not be helpful. Well, I'll tell that all of you guys. We all might die. Well, maybe, maybe tell true. Sarah. Oh, good idea. Okay. Uh, Nib Nub goes and tells Sarah where uh, his his mommies live and lets her know that if he dies, Sarah, can you tell them that they're good and I'm sorry? Oh, uh, wow, Nib Nub, I'm. I'm flabbergasted that you would trust me like this. I, of course, I would tell them. I hope nothing happens to you. I feel like we're becoming friends. Please come back anytime. And if I don't hear from you, I'll be sure to contact your mommies. Okay. Thank you, friend. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) That's that's adorable. (laughs) I kind of detected a hint of like, Lying though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Nim up that. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm sure somebody will uh will let my mom. Know. No, Sarah, Sarah's good. Sarah's no, no, not being Sarah, honest. Just just from Nim Nub being like, you, sure, friend. <laughs> oh no, no, it's no, just a new was, word in his mouth. Oh, yeah, okay. he's just confused. He thought everyone good was might could be his like mommy potentially, but. Sarah didn't want to be his mommy, but apparently she wants to be friends. So that's mm. that's new to Nim Nam. A little character growth. You guys are still my third, fourth, and fifth mommies, though, right? Right. Always. Yeah, yeah Nim Nub and the mommies. <laughs> that's what we should have really been called. All right, let's don't do this. All right, so you head into the tangles. Crow Asylum is an oddity. The slow on the hill slopes. It's made entirely out of stone. Single-story building has no windows. You can see as you approach, it is incredibly gloomy. It fits in well amongst all the rest of these buildings, covered with rainwater and mud and purple splashes from the midden stone. The nearby buildings are made out of. You approach first to the front door, the front entrance, a, a large set of double doors with a bronze plaque on the side that just says, Crove Asylum. We okay. want the back door, right? Yeah, we should go in the back door. Making yeah. your way around the side, following Bimkin's guidance, you find a small single door made of iron on the side of the building. A deadbolt lock at chest height keeps the door shut. Perception check for people and sounds in the other room and okay. possibly traps. Roll me perception. Ooh, 30. You detect no traps. You see no one lurking around, and the door being made of iron is very heavy, and with no window or grate on it, you do not hear anything on the other side. Do you think we should ready our weapons before we go in, or...? I literally always have my weapon ready. Right. Yeah, never mind. Wrong person. (laughs) All right. Everybody's good to go. We are might. I'm not going to pour this oil of radiance on my gloves first because I got two oil of revelations. I'm going to pour an oil of revelation onto um, my fancy sword that has this poem written onto it. Okay. It lasts for an hour, and the first creature it does damage to, it will impart the the light onto. Ooh, okay. Okay. Mm. Let's just keep that in mind. That's fine. You normally punch things, so you just pull out the sword when you need to. Like yeah. strike something that's turned invisible or whatever. Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. All right, guys, let's open the door. Oh, should I put my venom on my on my teeth? I have venom. Wouldn't that kill you? Yeah, uh, if you're doing the fear gem, you would want to set it on there early for sure. Oh, I already have all the fear gems 
Nimnub immediately put all the fear gems on on his teeth. All right. So uh, who's opening the door? I think Nimnub should do it. Oh, I'll do it. Uh, should I do it all quiet like? I think I'll open it quietly. I'm really quiet. Like, I know Crow. I've seen you struggle with doors before, Tom. All right. <laughs> Nimnub opens the door. <laughs> I'm, I'm great with doors. Um, I just want to say that Bimkin's got his crossbow. Crossbow out and loaded? Yes. Okay. Nice. Nice. All right. I'll, I'll open the door, but quietly? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Nibnava reaches out, turns the key in the door, rolls a stealth check. 23. 23. The door swings open. And as you look through... You see a small entry chamber with three different doors in it, leading in both to the south and to the east. There is a candle hanging on the wall, lit, illuminating the hulking form of a large man with a cage strapped to his head. Like a bird cage? or Like a bird cage wrapped around his head, essentially. He's currently turning the other way and looking at one of the doors, scratching up some peeling paint. What do you do? This is really oh. weird. Is there another door on the other side of him? Yeah, there's a door right opposite of him. I have an idea, guys. Can I can I quickly whisper to the crew? You have to be real quick because he's okay. going to start noticing you're here. I'm just going to say, I think we should just let this guy out. So I'm like, open the door and like stand to the side and see if he just wanders out? Yeah. He already has cage on head. He must be pretty okay to be released. Yeah. As you guys are in your scrum, you hear a voice. What are you doing at this door? You may leave. You are free now. You may leave. And he shuts the door. We're your... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go as well as I hoped. All right, get the key out and you can open it again. All right, do you have like a spell that'll make him... Go away or something? No, I think you got to bite him. I could command him to sit. I have fireball. That'd make him go away real soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Make the whole building go away <laughs> real quick. Is that a problem? Does anybody have rope? We tie him up? I'm I have sure rope. I have rope. Yeah, I think he knows we're here now. So the the element of we, surprise is gone. We got we to gotta probably punch this right, guy. I'll hold him down. But what? Wait, I have idea. What if we open door and he will be curious why nobody is there? So he will put his head out and mm. then we take rope and we pull it through cage. And then we can basically lead him around. <laughs> and if we tie him to tree, he has to stay. That's like the smartest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. I'm willing to watch you try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll hold him while you, while you put the rope in. Yeah. Yeah, All right, I think just I'm roll uh, initiative uh, already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Nimnub got 23. Theobald crit failed and got an 11. Willen got a 20. All right, Nimnub. Your turn. What do you do? All right, ready, guys? I assume they're ready, but apparently they're not. And I uh, burst <laughs> open the door. All right. The door bursts open. I'm going to go grab him. 29 total. Wow. Okay, he is so grabbed. All right, you're coming with me, buddy. And I take him out the door. Okay, make another athletics check. 24 this time. That will be enough. I'd say you can pull him 10 feet. Okay. At that point, it is the orderly's turn, and he is going to swing a club at you, attempting to do a snagging strike. A 15 to hit. That does not hit. He then uh, shouts at you again. You're supposed to let me go. Second strike. 19. Nope. And last action, he will attempt to escape with a 13. Do I have to roll against this? Nope. It's against your athletics DC. Gotcha. He's struggling to get out and struggling to beat you, but you're managing to deacon dodge him. He looks quite consternated and even a little bit upset and frightened at this point. Bimkin, it's your turn. I'm going to try to tie a rope to... Wait, are his hands are free, though. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't make any sense, because then he could just untie himself. (laughs) I don't know. He couldn't seem to work a doorknob, so... He closed the door. Oh, that's true. I have him pretty well grappled, so you 
have a chance to tie up his hands here, maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll tie up his hands. That's going to be an athletic check. Oh, no. 13. That is not enough. He manages to keep his hands from getting looped up. No, don't tie. Don't tie me up, you little mouse man. Um, Come on, Bimkin. I'm, I'm holding the hands right there for you. <laughs> So is that one action point? That's one action. And I can't attempt to do that again, can I? You could, but it's going to be uh, affected by multiple attack penalty. Can you make him fall asleep? Wait, I might be able to. Let me see. No, I can't make him fall asleep. I can command him to sit, but that's not going to last long enough. Well, we might not need to waste any spells. But Maybe I can just reason with him and yeah. tell him that he should go for a walk. He is greatly outnumbered here. Yeah. I mean, like, we got to consider that the kind of person he is might be the kind of person that's committing the murders. Maybe I will hold him down to aid the next person in attempting to tie him up. Okay. Make an athletics check to aid. 22. All right. So you are giving Nibnub a bonus on holding him. A plus one. Cool. Willen, what you going to do? What's the skill to tie? Athletics. Athletics. Okay, that is my worst one. Not, I have a plus one. Not in that. surprising. Yeah. Could you do like a sleight of hand or something? Or like I'm not sure what to do. I don't want to hurt him. We seem to have fallen in love with this man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, he'll probably hurt us the moment. True. He did yeah. just take a swing at you. All right. I'll, I'll cast a daze on him. Okay. So he needs to make a will saving throw. DC twenty one. Uh, critical fail. Cool. So that's stunned one on a critical fail, and he takes the damage. So go ahead, roll the damage. So he'll take 18 damage if it's double? Ooh. Sure will. And Oof. he drops to a knee, and you can see his head is just wobbling. Oh, man. And his eyes are, like, completely dilated and spinning. If this was a cartoon show, there would be, like, stars circling around his head. Does not look like he's in good condition. So this is non-lethal damage? It can be non-lethal damage. Okay. I will make a non-lethal damage. Okay, and Theobald. I'm going to devise a stratagem. Think about how I'm going to knock this guy out with my fists. Right. Like how I'm going to, like, where where am I going to punch his head? Like, you know, the little <laughs> mathematical <Yeah>. equation. <laughs> yeah, uh, where it won't kill him, it's, but it will oh. knock him out. Just poke his eyes out. Do the two-finger thing. I think that would have oh my gosh really bad <laughs> <laughs> that might take him out of the daze you're talking like three stooges yeah yeah. a 20 to hit do you use your action to actually do it oh yeah 20 seems good okay he's dazed you hit him it hits it connects nice. and uh, he only has two hit points left so he falls oh. unconscious nice so Theobald connects to the side of the head with a haymaker the cage rattles his head shakes back and forth. He slumps to the ground and begins to snore quite loudly. And the four of you look to the south through the door into Crove's Creepy Asylum. And we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for listening once again to The House on Carrion Hill. Please, if you're willing to give us a five-star rating on apple podcasts you can also find us on social media at the house of bob on twitter and instagram join us on our discord and talk about all sorts of rpg things and other stuff support us on patreon for a low low price of monthly support you can uh, get access to a bunch of one shots blog posts articles zines a whole bunch of stuff that we put on there just for you guys just for our patrons and i'd like to thank all of our patrons this month mortimer ben connor pedrick Brandon, Ron, Team Eamon, Pavel, Christine, Tom I, Elias, Mark, Mary, Jessica C, Ray, Scooter, Tyler, Josh, Keith, Block at 12, Tom W, Jessica D, Kieran, Mike, Sylvia, and Luke. Our work for this episode was by me, Sean Makes. Audio production and sound design credit goes to Astronomic Audio for all their great work, and music for this episode is by Mike Hammock. Roll on. Sorry, Roll I opened on. a door. Apparently, I can open doors. Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? Dan. <laughs> Stop that. That's a great tactic. Get just out of the dungeon, Dan. <laughs> just wait till Sean starts reading in. the credits and then open all the doors. I don't even know where your token is. Where did you uh -huh. go? I completely <laughs> Oh, sorry. I uh, found the BBEG and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> All right. Why did you get chili? I was serving stew. I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my mouth is too sticky. <laughs> yeah, Gross. have a drink. Can I get you yeah. to sign my adoption papers? I bite it. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically an X. <laughs> yeah, totally. Can I, I just pause for one second? Can you guys hear music in the background? No. Yes. You're, yes, you can I hear music. My, my girlfriend's is listening to music in the other room, so I'm just going to ask if she can turn it down just a little bit so it's not too much in the... Yeah, I, I didn't notice right it a, a little bit There has to be a rule here. Girlfriends must be silent during recordings. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Either they're in it or they're off. <laughs> <laughs> I usually ask <laughs> to leave the house. <laughs> You're gonna have to go yeah. like sit at like Starbucks with the baby and the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare come back yeah. until I text you. Yeah, I lock <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> lock the door. That's why I always hear scratching. <laughs> All right, I thought it was the dog. As you guys are in your scrum, uh, you hear a voice. <laughs> scrum. <laughs> what? He moved to the sides. <laughs> <laughs> Theo was too busy envisioning himself punching the guy. <laughs> All right. Actually, I was envisioning you leading him with a rope. <laughs> it was like, like a leash? Is he like a dog? Exactly. And then, yeah, totally got distracted. <laughs> Theo Bald thrusts his knife into his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Takes his head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Wow>. Willen. <laughs> 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 Teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, you have fists. You could just give him a... You could knock him out for later. Bop him on the head. <laughs>